Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest in the Stack uh, Construction Technologies webinars. And we are very pleased to start out with the first of a four part series of, of webinars really focused around detailed cost estimating and proposal generation. So as stack users, you guys are all very familiar with many of the core elements of our product, getting the plans into the system, uh, and of course, going through your takeoff process, and even collaborating in real time using our markup tools, as well as being able to uh, invite and share projects with others. But what we really wanted to focus on through the next four webinars is this concept of detailed cost estimating proposal generation, a way that you can really go beyond just doing your takeoffs and leverage that data to create detailed estimates and proposals to the folks that you're working with. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about this process. Uh, to start with. And if you have any questions throughout the entire session, please use the question dialog box that you see in the GoToWebinar uh, panel to type your questions in. And after we've gone through the, the set material, then we'll step through all of your questions and try to get them all answered for you. Uh, also, you're going to notice in your panel, there's a handouts area. We've incorporated a couple handouts that we would encourage you to download as well. One is the presentation that we'll be looking at today, and the other one we'll talk about at the end is a series of links that you can use to learn more information about the whole estimating process and how our product provides that capability. So with that said, um, people speaking today will first be myself. My name is Dave Wagner. I'm the VP of Product Marketing and Partner Development here at Stack, and I'm also very uh, happy to have with me a couple of our product leaders. Um, we will have Troy Newman, who is our product manager, actually giving you a demonstration of some of the core estimating capabilities. And then also we have Justin Ogilvy, who is our chief product officer, and he's going to share with you a couple new features that will be forthcoming in the next few months that also deal with the estimating. Now, before we get started, I mentioned that this is the first in a series. What we decided to do is break up this whole estimating effort into four webinars that will be provided to you in consecutive weeks each Wednesday starting this week. Today's will be a general overview, as I discussed earlier. Next week's, Troy will really dig into the details of items and assemblies. The following week, Troy again will dig in and we'll get into the estimating worksheet and how you create proposals. And then we're going to finish off with the fourth week where we're going to bring in a couple existing stack users that have been using our estimates and items and assemblies and proposals for some time now. And we're going to talk with them about how they've successfully used it and where they came from to get to this point. So with that all said, let's start talking about estimating proposals of generation in stack. So as all of I'm guessing the vast majority of you are all aware you currently can use Stack to measure all your quantities and do your counts today. Where we're really going to focus in today is taking that to the next level, where you can start to create items and assemblies and assign those costs and assign those packages out against your various takeoffs to start to understand exactly what's the labor, what's the material involved to calculate your overall cost and then take it to the next level where you can start to actually understand in detail what type of overhead is involved and what overall your profit needs to look like so that you can create a very nicely branded proposal. But before we start that, we want to ask you guys a few questions and better understand what you're doing today. So we have a couple polls. Let me launch the first one. And here's a poll that we would like to know how you're handling. Uh, hold on a second. I think I inadvertently closed the poll down too soon before you guys got a chance to vote. Yes, I did. So we're going to go to the second poll. And if you'd like to know 
If you're not using STAT today to do your estimates, how are you doing your estimating? So let's give everyone a couple minutes here to go in and put in their votes. You guys are doing great. Looks like about two thirds of you on the line have already voted. So we'll give it another uh, 30 seconds to collect the rest. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the results here. Yeah, just give it a few more votes come, come in here. Okay, so I'm going to close down the poll, and here you can see the results. And what we're really seeing is, and obviously evidence of the fact that while you're here today, is the majority of you really haven't investigated what STAC provides in this area. So this will be a wonderful opportunity for you to start that journey to see what makes sense. Also looks like we uh, had about a fifth of you that weren't aware that we had it at all, and it looks like about a tenth of you are pretty happy with your current solution. So let's start out by talking about items and assemblies. So first of all, when we talk about items and assemblies, what are we talking about? So the items are these, these elements, these materials, this labor that you can associate with a takeoff. And an assembly is essentially a collection of these items. And what Troy is going to show you in just a few minutes is in more detail how these items and assemblies are not just only created or imported, but also how they are used within the takeoff process. And it really allows you to create that bill of materials from your suppliers that you can use as part of your estimating process. Um, and what we're going to show you is not only do you get a set of libraries from Stack. You also can customize and create your own, or you can. we have some very specific supplier-centric libraries that you can use as well. So don't fear that you're gonna to have to enter all this information from scratch. So within this, this mechanism, what we're really going to do is we're going to look at the materials. We're going to look at the labor, the equipment, and the various different types of cost that go into defining what your various takeoff items have associated with them. We're going to leverage that information to help create some very detailed estimates. Sorry about that. We're gonna allow you to tailor your estimate to reflect how the other costs besides the materials are being handled. We're going to use those custom libraries I talked about earlier to make sure you have consistent costs that you're using across your projects. And we're gonna allow you to really start to define those other factors, the waste that goes into what you're working on, any overhead, a markup, either at an individual or overall perspective, and of course, incorporate your sales tax. So in the end, once you've established all this information, you can really now start to understand what type of profits that you're gonna have on the project. Using those markups to differentiate your projects from your selling price, and then visualizing that percentage of profit, that cost, that price type. So what you can then do is create a bid ready proposal, something that with your logos that has been created specifically for your client. Generating with, with all the right branding and all the right subtotaling and grouping and detailing. So with that said, what we're gonna do is turn it over to Troy and have him now actually show you in the product how this operates.
Hey, Troy, you should have access. Wonderful. There we go. Hey, everyone. I uh, just want to introduce myself really quickly. My name is Troy. I'm on the product team here at Stack. Been with uh, the company for almost eight years now. Um, loved every minute of it. Um, well, first, I want to just start with a, a very sincere thank you for attending today. It always means the world to me when people take time out of their day um, and come spend with us here at Stack. Um, I think you'll be really impressed with, with everything that we're going to show you here today. And with that, let's jump into the application. So here we go. So what we're looking at here is a, a partially completed project. So I want to take you through kind of where we're going and then we'll start you know, at an empty project and, and build this out together, okay? But like where we're going today is we are going to uh, build a takeoff. We are gonna attach uh, one of our, our pre-built assemblies. We are going to create different label groups so that we can assign our measurements to different groupings like this. Probably not gonna go as advanced with as five groupings here, but enough to, to get the point across. We're then gonna jump past uh, the reports tab, go directly into estimates and talk about, okay, you know, we can filter this data so that I can build an estimate and a proposal specifically on, on the data that I want to, which is a, a true power with it within Stack. So for example, I could, you know, build out an estimate you know, on my, you know, division nine, okay? Or I could say, yep, I'm going to build out an estimate and a proposal for, for building A. Or I could jump down and say, we're gonna build an estimate, you know, on phase one or any combination, right? I could do phase one, uh, a concrete uh, of building A. Again, you have complete control over how you want to present your data. And then ultimately, we're going to end up in the proposal so you can see how to take advantage of your different groupings and subtotalings. So I could say, you know what, I want to group by building and then group by cost type and include an optional page here and say, yep, we'll go by building and by takeoff. So that once you get to this stage, you know, you have an actual document that you can deliver to your customer that is subtotaled and grouped, you know, in a summary type section, as well as an optional detail page. So this is where we're heading, okay? Um, and now we're gonna kind of slow down and figure out, you know, how do we get there? So in today's session, as Dave mentioned, you know, today's gonna be more of an overview. So we're gonna be, you know, creating takeoffs. We're going to use existing stack assemblies. We're going to create some label groups, um, create um, two different types of estimates and proposals. So this is going to move at a little faster pace. Um, next week, we're going to kind of slow things down. We're going to focus more on um, these label groups and how they can be set up you know, in your company settings so that you can reuse these, you know, project after project after project. We're also going to spend far more time on, you know, creating our own items. We'll create, you know, our own assembly in that session. And we'll also take, talk about, oh, okay, how do I take a, a stack assembly and then modify it uh, to kind of make it my own? And that'll be the, the focus really of, of next week's session. Um, the following week, we'll kind of deep dive and take a very slow route through, you know, Stack offers two different types of estimate um, and take a nice slow, okay, we're going to group by this, we're going to filter by this um, and, and run through that way. And then we'll also touch on different templating concepts in that third session, such as creating a template for scope of work and terms and conditions. Um, different items that you want to include in the estimate that you're not measuring, um, different templating concepts to kind of speed things up, okay? So that's kind of where we're heading, but let's slow it down and just hop into a, a brand new project and we're gonna go through and, and build this together. So we're gonna do a lot of work on this elevation sheet right here. I mean, the only thing I've done 
in this project so far is I set the scale to 330 seconds, and then I used a dimension line here to, to verify my scale. So we're at the, at the very, very beginning here. All right, we're on the plans tab. Let's top one over to the takeoff tab. So on this plan, we're gonna measure three different materials. We're gonna measure the brick. We're gonna measure the ephus. Um, I also wanna measure the, the entrance canopy here. I'm gonna use that as an example once we get to the estimate section. So we're gonna be doing three takeoffs on this plan page. And then we'll do two levels of groupings just so that you can get a, a feel for that, okay? I am gonna move rather quickly through, through the measuring uh, just for time's sake. So let's start here. So let's create a takeoff. We're gonna do an area type takeoff for our brick. I can say, yep, we are gonna measure some standard brick and create my takeoff. Okay, down here we have an items and assemblies section. So you're gonna see some flexibility within Stack. Um, and you'll kind of de develop your own personal uh, choice on, on the workflow. So I'm gonna handle uh, the standard brick measuring in one workflow, and then we'll do the EFIS in, in a different workflow, just to show you that both exist, um, and then you can choose your, your personal preference here. So right now we're, we're creating our takeoff, um, and we're gonna go ahead and add an assembly here before we start to measure. So I'll go ahead and add assemblies. Mine is going to look like really messy over here um, just because I've been around for a while, but we can drill in. Here's stack assemblies. This is what you should see in your account. And I will just drill down and also show you how we can speed this up by just searching for what we're looking for. But we're gonna go into the masonry folder. And from here, we're going to go into brick masonry and we are going to go into the elevation view, which is what we are working off of. And we are going to select, you know, our standard brick area, okay? So you can either drill down and I could select this right there, or I could go up and say, you know what? I know what I want. I'm looking for standard brick, hit enter. It'll search and find it right there. Nice and quick and easy. The key here is that you want to choose the assembly uh, that matches your measurement type. So when we created our takeoff, we chose an area type takeoff. So we want to attach um, an area type assembly. So we can see here is an area and a linear, and we want to go with the area. I'm gonna add my assembly and it's gonna ask us some questions. So our assemblies are all set up um, in a very similar way. We'll have some text inputs above, and then we'll have uh, materials to choose from down below. So we can say we're going to do one layer. We can add our flashing and our crew production per hour. Again, this is what we're going to really slow down and take our time with in the next session here. I'm just going to quickly select our materials our crew configuration, grab some brick ties, my flashing, and we pulse and save. So at this point, you know, I've created my takeoff for standard brick. I've attached this assembly and I've answered the specific questions about the standard brick that we're going to measure over here. Okay. And now we're ready to roll, ready to roll. We can start measuring. Boom and I could immediately start to measure. In this case though, I'm gonna slow you down for a minute and we're gonna set up some groupings, okay? So by default, if I do not set up any, any groupings over here in the label section, you know, our takeoff templates, our reports are gonna show everything in its totality. Um, so I wanna show you how you can break that down. Um, you actually have, as I mentioned, you know, on the estimate filtering, you have complete control and how you want to, you know, consume your, your data and display your data. All right, so we are gonna create our first label group. So what we wanna put in here in this first box is what we want to group by. So in this case, we wanna group by elevation, okay? Elevation, oh, that's not where I wanted to go. That's better. Oh, 
I was just going to say I still spelled standard work correctly. I was doing good. Elevation, and then now I'm going to create a drop down. So we have a, a north, you know, a south, an east, and a west. And I could write elevation behind those if I wanted to. Um, also, if you have a misspelling like I commonly do, you know, you can click in here and make any corrections. You can also drag these to reorganize or delete these out. Okay. All right. We are almost ready to measure. All right, so we're going to tell the system, hey, we are going to start in the north elevation. I'm going to grab my little rectangle tool because I'm dealing with a rectangular structure. I'm doing one click here, dragging the mouse diagonally. Once I get to the edge here, I'm just going to hold down with the mouse, pull that across, double click there. I'm going to change my label. We're no longer going to work in the north. We're going to go over to the west. Again, draw a rectangle here. Change to the east. And then finally, I will grab the south. So all of that really just took you know, a matter of a couple minutes. Um, with that, most of the time, just be me and you know, me talking. Um, let me show you what we've done so far. So again, if I finish measuring, Again, this is going to show you know, everything that I've done in totality. So I measured you know, 6,712 square feet uh, of my brick area. Um, but I can change my groupings up here, right? So I can say, hey, I want this to group by elevation. This will show me my square footage per elevation. Pretty cool. Um, but it's also going to show me my materials. And we're going to get to that part in the estimates. Okay, so I, should, I mentioned I want to show you a couple different workflows. So we measured our, our, our brick, we created our takeoff, we added an assembly, we answered our assembly questions, we selected our label group, and then we and then we measured. Okay, so let's do this one a little differently. You'll see the outcome is exactly uh, the same. So again, I'm going to do an area type measurement. We will grab measure the EFIS. And I'm going to just start measuring. Zoom in here. I'm going to do one click to start. Pull the page right there. And around the building I go. So notice at this point, I'm not concerned about you know, what materials I'm attaching to it. I'm not concerned about a location. I am just measuring. For those people that just want to jump in and start measuring, you can completely do that. Looks like I didn't pick the best color. We'll go up and, and change that. And let's grab the rectangle tool here and run this across. And then just to let you know, in case you didn't, you know, if I was really, you know, going to bid this, I would, you know, select this. I would go to our cutout tool, and I would go through it and remove, uh, you know, all the all these windows and doors. Um, but for time's sake, we're just going to kind of skip that for today. And let's change our color right here. The system automatically picks the color. You can override that um, at any time. All right, so like I mentioned, there's a couple of different ways or a couple of different workflows that you can take. The items and assemblies, they can be added prior to measuring or they can be measured after the fact, okay? So my EFIS here, I have already you know, measured all of this area, but I have not attached an assembly here you know, that is going to generate the materials that I would need you know, to actually um, place all the CFS, okay? So you can do it before or after. I'm gonna go here. Again, I'm gonna search just because it's so much easier. And I want area, again, because I created an area type takeoff. I'm gonna add that assembly. You'll see, again, the setup is very similar, right? So we have some text inputs above. We're gonna choose our materials 
down here below. These three questions here are asking about you know, a waste factor. So this is saying, hey, for the adhesive, do I just want to assign a waste factor? For example, if I typed in 10, it would apply a 10% waste factor. So we can see that we can apply a waste to the adhesive, to the mesh, um, to the fasteners, and then also to the finishers. You can either add waste here, or you can add waste in the estimate. Um, the key is to not to do both, right? You know, you don't want to add a waste factor here and then get into the estimate and then add an, an additional waste on top of, of a waste and end up overbidding, you know, what you're trying to do. You can add either. Uh, my personal preference is I wait and I add waste in at the estimate, okay? But feel free to, to do either. We'll do our fastener spacing. And again, we'll do a crew production and we're going to go through and then choose um, our materials that we're going to use. And my crew. And we're good. All right, so whether we added this, you know, before we measured or after we measured, the outcome was the same. We're good. We can also assign to our label groups after the fact, okay? So notice when we measured our brick, you know, I, I was using the drop down to specify to the north and then changing the drop down to the west and then to the east to the south. You can do this after the fact. Um, and actually that's my personal preference. What I would do is I would build or go ahead and measure everything in the north elevation, actually all three elevations, and then go back and assign them after the fact, okay? So to do so, I could either, you know, select one, because I know I already have this one selected, but honestly, it's easier just to, to select them both. So I can go here to multi-select, um, or I can press M on my keyboard. That'll get me there too. I can just draw a rectangle. Whatever falls within that rectangle is gonna be highlighted. I can say that this is my north, and then I can just move around, boom, assigned to my west, assigned to my east, and then go down and grab my south elevation. Again, I was just using the M key on my keyboard to go into multi-select, okay? So what we've done is we've done one level of grouping. So we have all of our measurements. We also have our materials at this point. We just haven't looked at them yet. Um, we also, by default, give you um, a default grouping, requires no setup whatsoever, where you can group by plan name. We've only measured on you know, A200, so that's the only one that we have on our list, but just to show you that that exists. Okay, so we've spent a lot of time you know, talking about grouping and, and labels, um, but that's really gonna pay off for us once we get to um, the estimate, which is where we're heading. Let's go ahead and add an additional grouping just so that we can see, you know, what two grouping looks like. Um, and let's go ahead and create one for a phase. And I can say that we're gonna have a phase one and a phase two. Okay, you can create up to 10 levels, okay? So think of, let's see, if you want to go with, you know, uh, division four for masonry, and then you wanted to group it by building, and then you wanted to group by phase, and then you wanted to group by floor, and then you wanted to group by room. So you can get as granular as you want within stack. So you can go 10 levels deep, on the labels, and then plus plan name, which gives you actually um, a total of 11 layers. Um, again, in our session next week, we're gonna talk about how can we build these as templates so that we can just go to our library tab and then just quickly bring these all over into, uh, into the project. All right, but let's quickly do some assigns here. Again, I can either go to multi-select here and I'm gonna say this part is part of phase one, or I can press the M key, which is honestly my preference. 
phase one, and we'll say that these two are phase two, just to give us some things that we can differentiate in uh, once we get to the estimate. Boom. And let's do one more takeoff before we head over. I wanted to grab that, that canopy here. So let's measure uh, the square footage of the, the canopy here. So let's say that it you know, protrudes from the building uh, for about six feet. So with this, we'll do a, a surface area. Again, so we can calculate the square footage of that six foot protrusion there. And I'm just gonna call this my canopy. Boom. We're not gonna add an item assembly to this. I'm gonna say, you know, this is six feet, so six foot deep, okay, is where we're going with that, again, to calculate the square footage. And then again, I could assign, you know, before or after, but since I'm here, I'll say, yeah, that is in the north, which is phase one. I'm gonna do one click here. This is on a curve, so I'm gonna do one click here. I'm gonna press the A key to go into arc mode. I'm gonna click somewhere along the center and then bring that around and double click, okay? And we can see that that calculated, you know, my square foot based on my measurement and being six feet deep. Pretty cool. All right, so we have three takeoffs. We have um, attached uh, stack assemblies to the EFIS and to the standard brick. We have not attached any materials to the canopy, okay? We are gonna hop right over top of this report section and we are gonna dive right into the estimate. So questions like right from the beginning here. So within Stack, you can create two different types of estimates, okay? And we're actually gonna go through both. Um, the difference is a unit cost estimate would be where you're applying you know, a per, in this case, a per square foot price to your takeoffs. So when we get to the unit cost estimate, you'll see that it'll be populated by these three takeoffs, and then we're gonna assign you know, a per square foot price. Um, if I had done a, a linear, um, you know, it would be a per linear foot, per cubic foot, you know, per each. The key is that it would be based off of the measurements, okay? A material and labor estimate is a far more detailed uh, type estimate where we're going to actually price the materials that are generated from the assemblies that are attached to the takeoffs, okay? So remember our EFIS here, we have an assembly and standard brick, we have an assembly. Those are going to both yield materials, right? Um, so the material and labor will be based off those materials and not the takeoffs. That should make a little bit more sense as we go a little further in here. Functionally, once we get in, they operate exactly the same. So with Stack, it's not that you need to come in and learn how to you know, create a unit cost estimate and then turn around and then learn how to create a, a material and labor estimate, you're gonna find that the workflow is exactly the same, okay? Unit cost, click on that. This is where we can start to, to use, utilize some of the, the, the label work that we did. So it's gonna prompt and say, hey, do you wanna you know, give this estimate a name? We're gonna default a name if you want, and you can really hit save and continue. Um, but this is where you can filter, okay? So by the default, where we're going to include everything that you've measured. But again, you have complete control over that. I can say, nope, I don't want to include everything. I want to only include, you know, my phase one work. And then you'll see that this will filter out so that I'm only dealing with, with my phase work, okay? I would also probably want to, you know, name that, <laughs> you know, phase one, um, just so that I, mentally can, can recall, okay? So again, we could break this down by, you know, by elevation, we could break it down by phase. These are the two, you know, that we created. Uh, we could also break it down by plan name. All of our work is in you know, A200, so that wasn't, wouldn't help us too much today. 
But let's go ahead and say, okay, we are going to work within uh, phase one. Again, that's going to filter this. So it's going to show me only my quantities uh, for my phase one. And then I can start to work through the worksheet. So let's talk about the worksheet here for just a minute. You're going to see a quick reference session up here at the, the top right, where it's going to show the project cost, you know, as we start assigning costs. Once we get to the proposal, it's going to start to talk about our, you know, illustrate our selling price and then also our, our profit percentage. Okay. On the left, you're going to see kind of some reference information over here, and you'll see some pie charts start to build as we work through. Um, if you prefer just to have kind of the worksheet view, you know, you can use this little arrow right here, and you can completely hide that left panel just to give you the full experience of the worksheet. Again, that's a personal preference, and it's a quick uh, little click here back and forth to, to bring that panel back. Okay, so everything in blue is editable. Okay, so our quantity, our unit, these are numbers that were pulled from our measurement, you know, into the estimate. And then this is member where we can assign waste. So I can say, hey, you know what? I typically assign a 10% waste factor to everything, and I can do so here. Okay, again, that's your personal preference. It's going to take the measured quantity, add 10%, and give us a, an adjusted quantity that we can then assign a unit cost here. So I can say, you know, my per square foot for the for the canopy you know, is $10. You know, my per square foot for my EFIS work is, is $375. Uh, my, my brick is $575. And you can see that it's starting to build out our project cost. Okay, and that's it for, for, you know, our measurements. You know, we did three takeoffs and we're good to go. Right down here is a non-measured section. So this is a very Excel-like experience. And this is where you can add in really anything that you're not gonna physically measure on a plan page. Okay, typically like equipment or per permits or, or freight, that type of thing. Um, my example is a truck, so I can say, you know what, we're going to need a truck for three days. So see what I mean about a very Excel-like experience? I can add a waste factor if I wanted to, and I can say, yep, that's $750 a day. And again, you can see our little pie chart updates in real time. I'm going to go ahead and add my overhead, 12%, you know, the cost of doing business. I want to pass that on. Uh, to my customers, and we can see that we have arrived at a project cost. So this is saying, you know, me, Troy, Troy's company, for me to build these structures, it's going to cost me you know, forty-eight thousand six hundred fifty-one dollars and twelve cents to to build this. Okay. Um, and notice that we're not, you know, I'm assuming that my labor is rolled up into my my per square foot price here to add profit and or markup and tax, we're going to create a proposal. So right here, boom. This is gonna ask me a lot of information about the customer. This is where you would upload your logo, okay? Again, we'll cover all these things that kind of move things along quicker um, in our third session, but you'd click the manage to get there. This is where you can say, you know, who is, uh, this proposal going to. Yep, they're in the United States and they're on the one, two, three, anywhere. And just fill them out just to populate some data here. Oops, too many ditches there. And you know, I will do this work. And here are my terms. So you can either type into these sections, you can copy and paste from a Word doc. Um, in the third session, we'll talk about actually building templates within Stack, and then you can just you know, choose a template and have it preloaded in here, which is really ultimately where you, where you would want to go, okay? So now I've filled out everything about my proposal. Um, I left the email and phone, that's okay. And now we can see 
again, what we're dealing with is the areas in blue here. So we can see that we have a markup column that's been added. We also have an additional markup column that's been added and, and a sales tax column that's been added. Again, if this starts to feel a little too you know, crunched for you, you know, feel free to hide that left panel and use this only as the worksheet view. So again, with Stack, you know, we're all about flexibility. So I can add my markup, you know, row by row if I want. I can add my markup, you know, at the project level, you know, or I can do both. You know, I can say right here, we're gonna do 20%. That is gonna be 20% on the project cost, or I'm sorry, on the selling price. And then I can look and be like, oh, that's not quite where we want to be. You know, I can either adjust it here or I can add some additional markup to the row level. So again, you have complete control how you want to, to mark up the project. You can do it, you know, item or row by row or the project in its entirety um, to get us, you know, around that 20% mark. Um, it's completely up to you. Sales tax, again, you can choose what you want to tax in, in your category here. Um, you know, some states mandate, you know, tax on materials. Some states mandate tax on materials and, and labor. So we're going to give you those choices here. Okay. So we ran through this worksheet. Where we're heading here is a proposal, okay, of what your final deliverable that you can hand to your customer or email to your customer. So I can say, hey, you know, by default, if I do nothing else, if I just click download proposal, it's going to give me a lump sum, which is great. A lot of people just want a lump sum and they don't want all the detail. Um, so just clicking download is exactly what that's going to give you. But I can also take advantage of my, of my different groupings. So I can say, you know what, I wanna group this by phase. And then I want to group this by elevation, okay? And what this will do is give you a summary page, which you can choose whether or not you want to include a signature line and then an optional detail page. So think of this as kind of like an attachment to the summary page. Where here I can say, yep, I want to include this page. And then also I want to include pricing. Again, you have complete control over what you want. Uh, to share. So I can say, you know what, again, we want to go by phase and elevation, you know, and we can go down a third level just to show you what, actually we'll go four levels just to show you what it looks like here. Boom, and generate my proposal. So now we'll be looking at, you know, our summary sheet. So again, phase one, because remember we filtered this to only show our phase one. So I've got a subtotal for phase one and then a breakdown of my north and by my west elevations. Again, here's my non-measured. So we have a total with tax. And if I scroll down, this is the detailed sheet. Again, this is going, you know, four levels deep. You have complete control over how many levels and the groupings that, that you want to share with your user, okay? And that's unit you know, cost. I know we're moving kind of quickly through this. Now let's go back. Let me say that we we're doing a phase one, okay? What we don't want to do, if you want to do a, a phase two estimate, you don't want to just go to edit properties and delete that and then add phase two and then name that phase two because that's going to override all of the work that you've done. So ideally, if you want to do a phase one and a phase two, um, estimate, you would leave this one alone and say, hey, I want to do a new unit cost. So you can do multiple estimates. You can do multiple proposals within Stack. Again, there's a lot of power here. And then I could go in and specify, hey, this is my, my phase two, right? And then I would probably name that phase two and then run through basically, you know, what we just did. But instead of that, we're going to jump over into uh, the material and labor world. So hop into here. Now notice it's the same looking experience, right? Like I said, once you understand how to work one of the estimates, you, you know how to work the other ones too. 
again. So I can give it a name here, or I can go with our default name, and then I can choose. So my groupings are the same, except we're gonna pick one up here. Okay, cost types. Cost types is a really cool issue, a really cool thing. We're gonna talk about how to create custom cost types uh, in, in the third uh, session of the series. So I could say, hey, I just want to create you know, a, a material estimate here, or I just want to do a labor one. Or again, like my first example, I could just do a phase one. Again, I can do any combination of this that, that I want to, okay? We'll kind of stick with what we did on the first. So we'll go with phase one, and I'll say that this is my phase one. There we go. All right, so it's going to filter what we're looking at specifically to that. You can see that we have crew hours here. We have material costs here. So we're into you know, the items and assemblies were into the, the materials world. We're not working, you know, strictly off of our takeoffs. You know, here we're very specific, you know, okay, for our, our we polls, you know, we've got 39.62. That's going to round up to 40. So you can see that everything here is based on, based on materials. You can see I have a lot of zeros here, okay? I've got one little standard brick here that is priced you know, at $75, $75 uh, per thousand. I'm gonna show you quickly how you can get your pricing in to stack, okay? So let's do our we pulls here. I'm just gonna run my mouse over that and I'm gonna close copy. I'm gonna go to my items. I'm just gonna paste that here. I'm gonna let stack do all the work for me. It's gonna go find that. I can click on it and say, okay, you know, this is my price per piece, okay? And that's how you start to build out um, an actual database pricing here. So I need to update. So let's go into new, boom, and we'll go full on this one. And now we can see that that is populated. So anytime in the future that I use um, this item or this assembly that includes this item, Oh, it's going to pre-populate. So the end game where, where you want to get to is when you come to your estimate, you know, your unit cost field is already filled out, you know, and that's where things start to get, you know, extremely quick. And then also combine that with, you know, some of the templating concepts that we're going to cover, okay? Again, the workflow is exactly the same. You know, I can go through, I can add a waste factor, you know, or not. I can be very selective about what I want to apply a waste factor to and what I don't. Anything that doesn't have a unit cost, I can assign a unit cost here and then just work my way down the list. If we're talking about, you know, a database price, you know, I can override it here. You know, so it's going to pre-populate in this case the $7.50. You know, I can say, you know, for this job, you know, I want that to be $8. So I can override any of those. Okay, you'll see the non-measured, again, exactly the same. I can go in and add my truck. We're also gonna talk about um, templating concepts for this area as well, where I can just add in, you know, item sets, what we call them, where you can preload and drop in, you know, your, your eight or nine, you know, non-measured items that you would typically have. Again, we're gonna add overhead. The workflow very very similar once i create my proposal again it's going to ask me for that same information again this is where i select my logo this is where my scope scope is my terms and i will leave that customer information blank for now so which you wouldn't know. So if you're going to give the same proposal to multiple people, you can just leave that, leave that blank. And we are good to go. All right, download proposal. Again, this is the same presentation that we were just looking at. Okay, by default is the lump sum. And I can go in and choose you know, how I want this to display. So I can say, hey, I want to show this by phase and then also by elevation. 
again it's up to me but i can choose to include the detail and then i can drill down you know wherever i want to go with this elevation phase and then we'll do a cost type to finish it out download my proposal and i'm good to go so this shows you know phase one total subtotal and then it shows you know the north and the west elevations roll up into this number here is my phase two the south and the east elevations roll up into this number and um, here's my non-measured and my proposal total looks like i did not add tax <laughs> onto this one um, let's go back i didn't even add mark up here cool thing again we're going to cover this in the third session there are so many things that you can do and stack just to make the experience so much faster. So you can see on my materials, they came in with a default markup of 30%. Okay, that is something I set in my company settings that I want my materials to always be at, at a 30% markup. Um, but again, I can override this. You know, I have complete control with, with what I wanna do, but there are a lot of things that you can do to make this experience, you know, much quicker. You know, like if my unit costs were our already entered into the database. I had a predefined markup, you know, and I'm gonna work off of, uh, you know, templates for the item set, and I'm gonna work off the templates for, you know, my scope of work and my terms and conditions. I, could, I think you can see where I'm going, you know, that really the time spent on this page um, can be drastically reduced, and that's what we're gonna cover in, in the third session. Again, where we're going is our, our proposal. Yeah. Here we go. And then here is my optional detail page just to show you what that would look like. And everything's nice and priced and looks good. For the most part, I missed some pricing there. Um, but this is a very accurate, very accurate material and labor estimate. So this looks great, Troy. So we've had a little more than five minutes left. So why don't we, um, if you're finished off, why don't we uh, have Justin talk briefly about what the future looks like and a couple of questions that have come in. Yeah, sorry, Dave. I got a little talkative. Let me uh, nope. stop sharing and you can take it from here. It was awesome, Troy. Good job, man. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Okay, sorry, Justin. So what do, we, what, what do you got planned for the future for us in this area? All right, all right. Let's uh, let's talk real quick about that. So, hey guys, I'm Justin. I'm the head of product development here at Stack. Um, you know, we've been to, doing takeoff forever, but estimating is relatively new for us. Um, we're working very hard to make it uh, to make it better, and we continue to release advancements every couple months. And so, I just want to give you a preview here what we're going to do over over really the next two months here with estimating. Um, so, what you're looking at on, on your screen is is what we're calling a summary view. So, you know, Stack is Estimating right now is is good for straightforward straightforward projects that are that are pretty easy to understand. But we want to give you we don't really we're working on giving you tools to really slice and dice and understand an estimate so that you can feel confident in your number. And that's what we're trying to get with this summary view here. So um, we're giving you some additional tools to sort to um, to slice and dice by not just you know cost type and and um, uh, like we do now, but we're adding visibility into, well, how, what is my price? What is my cost? What is my profit per takeoff item or my cost price or profit by, in this case, I'm using floor, but any labels I've set up. So in Troy's examples, like, you know, my cost for, or price or profit by phase one, phase two, phase three, we want to, want all that information to be sort of at your fingertips here in kind of this dashboard summary view. Um, we're introducing a key unit concept here where where you can you know these are, these are numbers you're probably using in your business right now um for you to just kind of to to find to make sure that your estimate feels right so you've got a you know you got a project size and and i can say this is a in this case this is maybe i'm doing roofing and this is a giant 37 square roof you know i can look at what is what is my cost per square what is my price per square um all customizable so if you're actually you know if you're a concrete guy and you you want to look at cost per cubic yard or price per cubic yard or even profit per cubic yard we want to let you do that and just have that at a glance um, and give you give you some handles to move here so i can say you know what is my material markup is it where i want it to be um, you know and can bump things up and down so that's this is where we're going with um with uh 
this estimate summary view. The second thing we're gonna do here in relatively short order is get the estimate data into our reporting system. So we've got we got that report section that we skipped over, but you're all probably you know, you probably used it. Um, and it's it's really great for slicing and dicing and, and organizing data and pulling out just a segment of data and exporting to Excel and snapshotting data so that you're certain it's not going to change. All that functionality we want we want you to have all of that um, on your estimates. So we'll be pulling estimate data into the reporting system. I don't have a visual for it, but um, but that's going to be a powerful way to let you create additional views, right? You know that you might need to get something that's not a proposal out of your estimate. You might need to get a schedule of values, a bill of materials, something else, a pick list for the warehouse. We want to let you do all that um, by getting estimate data in the reports. That's all Thanks, I got, Justin. Guys. That sounds fantastic. So. Um, how do you get started? How do you go from here? So obviously sign up for part two, part three, part four, and learn more, as Troy mentioned uh, a few times, uh, a deep dive into those areas we looked at briefly today. Uh, check out some of the help articles that are available to you in the product. Um, we have a number of videos that you can access uh, and set up an appointment to talk to some of our specialized trainers. So you'll notice these are all linked. Uh, obviously you can't get to them on this screen, but you can in that handout I mentioned earlier. So if you head out to the handout, download it, and all these links will be active, and you can get to this information instantly. Okay, so with the couple minutes we have left, we did have a few questions roll in. So Justin and Troy, is there a way to have different profiles for materials based on which company we buy from for different projects? Well, that's a great question. So, and, and the answer is, is yes. Um, so I don't know if you remember when I was um, going through it and attaching my assemblies, those assemblies were, were, were within folders. So you could have a folder per manufacturer um, and then different assemblies per manufacturer and grab from there. So absolutely, yes, you can do that. Wonderful. Can you change quantities on an estimate sheet if necessary? You can't. Um, they are all linked back to the measurement. So if you wanted to update a quantity, you would actually go back and update the measurement itself, which will then update either the, you know, the measurement and the unit cost estimate, or it will update the values of the materials and the material and labor estimates. So not directly on the worksheet, but you can, you know, play with the waste number. So maybe if you're wanting to just bump that quantity up a little bit, you can use a waste factor maybe to, to quickly get where you want to go with that. Great. A uh, question came in uh, about that they missed the presentation. Can they find it later? And I should have told you guys this earlier. Yes, absolutely. So you guys will get an email uh, with a link to the presentation that you can watch. And normally we get those out within about 24 hours. So you will have access to that. Are there any other questions with the minute we have left? I'm not seeing any, so I very much thank you all for attending. I hope uh, this gives you, for that 61% of you that said you really didn't know much about estimating, this starts to push you in that right direction, and we very much look forward to seeing you guys all again next week at about this time where Troy will really dig into that next level of detail on the items and assemblies, show you how they're created, the formulas you can associate with them, uh, and really get a good idea of what we can do for you. Thanks everyone, very much appreciated. Thanks everybody, hope to see you next week.